what is up we're back in the lab so when i ran my tank last week i've got these giant drill motors in it and a worm gear lies this is the gearbox for it right so a worm gear lies in here and a radial gear here there's a lot of heat i guess worm gears they just make a lot of heat and I wanted to make it not a 3D printed case. So if I, let me go back to like this morning, turn all that stuff off. So this is the 3D printed file or 3D printer file for half of one gearbox what's in the tank right so worm bearing bearing gear the axle goes through there there's a gear on one side here so I had a thought let's go ahead and try to redraw this and then try to cut it on the CNC mill out of aluminum so if I had an aluminum gearbox potentially I could put heat sinks on it I could fill it with fluid um, and it, I wouldn't have to worry about it melting stuff like that right so this morning I started drawing on the surface of that STL file so that first file is a mesh and I just on each plane on X, Y, and Z plane, I started tracing all of the things that I really cared about, right? So here's the journals for the bearings. Here is where the bearing goes in there. Here's the outline of the gear, all the screw holes, outlines of things, even on the bottom. And I also have, there's the worm, there is the gear, so we can look at the whole assembly. This is pretty much how it sits in the tank. It's all plastic, and I guess when I was feeling, I was feeling heat right here. Uh, yep, yep, this is the part that's exposed, so this is the top of the tank. I could feel it right there. It wasn't a lot. Mike did say that he actually melted a gearbox when he put some brushless motors on there and that he can't actually put the motors he wants to put on it. So I spent my day retracing it. And if we turn off his mesh, turn on all of the bodies that I drew today, Boom. And then we have a very simplified version of it, which is much more friendly for machining. So it doesn't have a lot of weird geometries on the bottom side. Very simple. Turn the gears off. Uh, I think, yep, there's the bearings. Still, oh. Still need to figure out there's like a step in here that I saw in the mesh. I haven't quite figured that part out yet. Um, and then I simplified where it mounts onto the tank as well. So I've been watching some Fusion Cam videos and I've already taken a block of aluminum and faced it. Uh, that's similar to like the fly cutter video I showed. So I won't show that again. But what I plan to do first, do a couple contour passes. And then uh, first I'll do the bottom outline. I'll do the, the top outline. And this is also sitting inside of a vise right now. So the vise is here and here. So I'm not going to go like all the way down. I might have like a little lip there. 
Then I'm going to try to figure out how to, uh, I think I just need a boring, a couple of boring operations here. I'll probably use like a ramp or something. And I have some bottle nose end mills that I'm going to use here. So those have like a nice round profile that'll help me channel that out. Um, I know that this is not the final iteration of where the worm is going to sit, but I'm hoping that the stack of bearings and worm. Yeah, so I'm hoping that all of that just kind of drops right into there. There's a couple spacers that are 3D printed in the original source files from Mike on Thingiverse. Uh, so I'm probably going to look for either a six millimeter washer that will fit in there, or I will just part off a couple of pieces on the lathe and make sure that's all butter. Um, if that all works out, hopefully I don't have to like dig out that little step that I mentioned earlier. We've got the block of aluminum over here. We've got the file loaded up. These are our two outlines. Here's like the uh, narrower outline on the top. And then here's the stepped out one on the bottom where the plastic uh, top cover of the tank mounts. Got the stock over here. Got everything ready to go. This is just a piece of scrap that I had, so it's got a couple of blemishes. I'm pretty sure this is not going to go as I expect it to. So, whatever. Here we go. operations later. The next thing to do would be to flip this over, machine off the back side. There's where I had our accident in the first two takes there. So that was kind of a clamping accident. Um, I guess Things I learned, I would probably face off the sides that are clamping it, uh, make sure it's clamped super tight. I might try to use the Mighty Bites to clamp it, a little bit lower profile, a little more control over the clamping force. So fundamentally, I was able to carve it out. Um, I can make that a lot more round a couple different ways. I can um, use a lower resolution pass. Uh, I have since got some ball nose end mills, so I can make that nice and round. Um, instead of wasting tons of aluminum, so this will probably go either on display as just achievement unlocked 3D carving of metal. Um, so instead of wasting a bunch of aluminum, I've gone ahead and got a one inch HDPE block. It's pretty much a cutting board. And I'm just gonna take this on my table saw, cut off some slices, turn the slices into blocks, and then just start doing that up here. I won't feel too bad if I wasted this. This is about 20 bucks. And yeah, 
I'm just going to uh, tweak and tune the program a little bit. Mike sent me a couple of ideas on how I might create some soft jaws or otherwise make a fixture that will let me flip this to face off a lot of this stock and machine the back profile, do all of the drilling on the back side for the mounting. So that's all going to happen next. Pretty excited about where this is going. So check back soon. We'll be tearing up some more chips in the shop. Peace.